All right, since the Osborne's up and running, I thought I'd show what it would do if you had bought it. So for $1,800, you got about $1,500 worth of software. And the software came on diskettes. And if I can get them out of the little cubby here, they kind of fit tight. So you got five diskettes on the normal, on the normal product. Uh, you got uh, one diskette that was labeled uh, CPM Help. Um, one that was CPM extended, so those are CPM things. So these are single density disks, and in fact, Osborne was very conservative when they formatted these, and they only format to 92K, so 92K is all you get. So CPM help, CPM extended. Uh, the number three disk was uh, Microsoft Basic and Compiled Basic, which I don't know if Microsoft wrote that one or not, but it came with a compiling, compiling Basic and a Microsoft Basic. I don't find the Compiling Basic any use at all. Um, it created a runtime small program, but then you had to use a, a, a runtime program to run it. So a lot it was a lot like when you run Microsoft C applications and they ha it has to road that, load that you know, real-time thing. It has to have a bunch of stuff in the background, and you had to do that for this uh, compiled basic as well. But I'll show, you, I'll show you some Microsoft basic programs that I wrote. It comes with SuperCalc. So most of these, I think, were sold to business people. And so it came with SuperCalc, and uh, so you could do all of your uh, analysis and stuff on that. And then it came with WordStar, which is your, your uh, word processing. And it also came with a uh, mail merge, um, I believe. So I, I don't know anything about mail merge, but it allows you to insert. When you're, when you're putting in WordStar, you can put in certain tokens, and it automatically inserts names and stuff if you want to do mailings and stuff like that. Uh, then I have a, a, a disk here that I just say is data. So it comes with two drives, so you could put in your uh, program over here, and then you, because it's only 92K, you might run out of space very quickly. So you can have a blank floppy over in B, so you have an entire 92K worth of storage over here. So that's why I created the 90, the 90, uh, the one there. So let's, uh, let's put in the first disk. When you boot up the system, it gives you this, and it says, Insert it, insert a drive. This is unusual for CPM. Usually CPM just boots and it doesn't tell you what to do. But this one says insert a drive, something into drive A, and hit return. And then it will go grab the disk and it will it will boot. Okay? And it'll look at the disk and looks to see if there's an auto start program. And if there's an auto start program, it automatically executes that. And so this one has a little help program in it that's your, that's your, uh, uh, thing the thing that you get for this diskette it says oh i'm going to force you to look at the help file so that's what this diskette does so i'll change lenses so we can get a better look at this all right we can see the screen really well now uh there might be a little bit of glare on the screen because it's a curved crt but otherwise uh it's black and white crt it's i think the executive models were uh uh, uh yellow or or uh, um had a yellow phosphor, but these had the uh, black and white phosphor. All right, so the very first disk we'll put in is a help disk. Uh, so you put the uh, floppy on the drive and hit uh, return. And it goes and looks at the disk for an auto start program. And if there is an auto start program, then it runs it, which gives you this flash screen. Flash screen. And anyway, this one says, go ahead and run. Um, the help files, which aren't all that much helpful, but <laughs> uh, so what do we want help on? We want help on um, we want help on uh, WordStar. Oh, WordStar is a word processing. You can use WordStar. Use it by typing WS. <laughs> so it doesn't really give you any help. It just says what WordStar is. Oh, let's see. Uh, same thing with like the assembler. The assembler is like, hey, you, you better know what you're doing. And if you do assembly, that's what it does. It's, it's really, really silly. Um, file names. Okay, maybe this is a little more helpful. Tells you, you know, this is, there's a file name and there's an extension. Uh, might be DOC. Anyway, it gives you a little bit of help, a little bit maybe. There's graphics. Okay, what kind of graphics can we do? Oh, that's, that's, all, you, that's all you get. <laughs> you get some graphics characters in the uh, ASCII set, but yeah, it's uh, not really much help, is it? Microsoft Basic, I need help on Basic. Oh, 
basic is basic. Type M basic, and then you get basic. And that's what you get. Oh, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> you could put some extra things down in there, but I'm not going to tell you what they are. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Quitting each day. Quitting, this is probably one of the more useful help things. It's like you can hit certain things to get out, but make sure you remove your diskettes from the drives before you turn off the power. That's really important with these things. Never have the diskettes in it when you turn it off and never have the diskettes in it when you turn it on. Never leave them in there. Always stick them out or you will corrupt them. And I've already corrupted one on this Osborne because I forgot. Oops. Um, luckily, oh, so the very first thing is if you get discs, always make a copy immediately, make a copy and then never, never use that copy because you're going to do it. You're going to erase them. Um, all right. Yeah. So this is really not helpful at all. Uh, I talked about memory. The upper 4k is video Ram, which I'm really fascinated with. So we'll, we'll run a program I wrote to, to play with that video Ram. It's, it's part of the whole Ram thing. So you can actually read and write from video RAM, which is kind of fun. Um, my favorite though is Z. <laughs> this is the self-portrait. Drive A, five inch monitor, drive B, get slot, <laughs> bright and dim. Oh yeah, you can, you, can, you can make it bright and dim. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I want it a little bit brighter than that. There we go. Okay, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, so let's, let's get out of here. Boots to CPM, pretty cool. And, uh, oops, not dirt, <laughs> dirt, <laughs> dirt. I shouldn't write a program called dirt. Um, yeah, that's what you got. A help file, a setup, all CPM type stuff, pip, xdir. xdir is a little bit of extended directory. It gives you a little more information. We have 4K left on this diskette. That's why they give you another drive. Okay, so that's uh, that's the first disc that you got. You got five discs. Um, disc number two. Let's see, put these over here. Disc number two you got was called CPM Extended. So I hit reset and then the uh, return key. Loading CPM. Okay, so this one boots right into CPM and gives you kinds of fancier CPM type stuff. DDT and Ed and Move and all those things that 99% of the users who bought it, well, maybe back then, maybe not 99%, but 90% of the users probably never used this stuff. They just wanted SuperCalc. They just wanted WordStar. Uh, okay, so disk number three is basic. Let's put in basic. Reset. It says loading Microsoft Basic. So even though it came with compiled Basic, it, it, it ignored it. it left, it's on the disk, you can use it, but it just went ahead and booted it into Microsoft Basic, which has got normal Basic stuff. Um, let's see here. Let's load a program. Uh, I have one called MSI. You can put the close quote in, but it, it's not needed. <laughs> just save typing if you don't put it in. List. There we go. Demo program for one to 10, say hello. And we're gonna use the tab, tab command to move it over each time a little bit. So a fancy hello, there you go. Wow. Okay, so I was really fascinated with the memory mapped IO. So the first program I wrote was called video. And in this one, um, we are going to write to, uh, to locations F000, um, which is in video memory. Now, in micro, old Microsoft Basic, you said ampersand H as a hexadecimal number. And then you could say F000 to F010. And we are going to write all 256 characters, 0 to 255. Okay. And nothing happened. Now, why did nothing happen? Well, it's happening someplace else. It's, remember, there we go. Remember, you can scroll back and forth and left and right on this weird machine. And uh, so memory, you have a memory pointer where the, the location at the bottom is, but then you can move things around when you're displaying it. So 
Um, and if you run it again, it might be in a different spot next time. And so let's break that. Let's run it again. Each time, yeah, see, now it's down there. <laughs> so that's where F000 is now. So it just runs through 0 to 255. So 0 to 127 is all of the letters. And then if, when you go to 128 and higher, then it's underlined. And that's, that's, the whole, that's the whole thing. All right. Let's load our other program here. Vid video 2. So we just wrote in one little small section of the uh, of the of the video RAM. Now we'll go from F000 to F F00. So a bigger range of it, and we're going to step by hundreds in hex, and then we're going to write 40 characters. Um, and so there you go. Uh, so we are directly writing into video memory and incrementing and. And those are all of the graphics characters from 0 to 40. Um, yeah, anyway, fun stuff. System. Durr. So like I said, you got basic, you got C basic, and then you got C run to. That's the runtime part of C basic and uh, some other things. Okay. So the next disk is SuperCalc. I'm sure this was a big reason people bought these machines, SuperCalc and WordStar. They were expensive programs, so getting the whole thing packaged together for a good price. 1700 sounds like a lot, but it really wasn't. It was considered to be a real deal to have these programs thrown in for free. You got about $1,500 worth of program and you only had to pay $1,800. So basically, the machine only cost you 300 bucks. Um, SuperCalc, uh, normal spreadsheet with the arrow keys actually work like regular arrow keys, so that's pretty cool. We are using our video memory here extensively. So let's load in uh, uh, a file, MSI. It says, do you want to load all or part? We'll load in all. There you go. Here's MSI, MSI guy costs, uh, YouTube uh, revenue, patron revenue, expenses. Yeah, <laughs> I just throw some stuff in here. These are the real numbers, though, from a year ago. Um, I was not making a ton of money. <laughs> uh, my patrons have gone up quite a bit. Thank you, pa thank you, patrons. Um, I have some generous patrons now. Um, but last year. Uh, I made about $4,000 in YouTube revenue plus patrons, and I had about $5,000 in expenses, so um, definitely in the negative direction, but you guys are worth it. Um, so we can quit this. And then we'll go to WordStar. Everybody's favorite word processor back in the day. All right. Micro Pro WordStar. Very nice. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I don't. I haven't used this very much. How can you load a program? Delete or create? Okay, so you hit D. And it says, what do you want to load in? We'll say sample. Sample.txt. Then there you go. It's got a bunch of embedded characters. I don't know what they do. When you print it out, it'll look nice because you put in embedded characters for the printer and you put in embedded characters for the, um, what's it called, mail merge. So like, like here's a mail merge thing. Provide 
mail merge with blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you can put in tags and then mail, you can have a list of like, like form letters and it'll put the person's name on each one differently depending on the mail merge thing. I don't, I've never used it. Don't know how it works. Anyway, there you go. Control Q, I think, gets us out. Uh, no, it doesn't. I think it's Control K. Let's see here. Control K and then Q. Let's see here. Escape key. All right. Control K and then Q, I think. Abandoning unchanged file. There we go. Anyway, quick introduction. Those are the files, you, the diskettes that you got. Uh, thanks to a fellow over in the Netherlands who supplies these things on, on eBay. If you need a set of the disc, it's like you get like uh, the five discs for about twenty six dollars, something like that. Um, so you know he's got he's got Osborne and Capro and some other old things. I don't know, uh, but he keeps it alive. He keeps the hobby alive. And I, I went and got. Uh, a set of five discs, so I'm ready to go. Okay, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, my next step is going to be to try to get communication from a PC into this machine. Um, there is an RS-232 port, and um, I will be trying to uh, have two-way communication through the RS-232 port, um, and that way I can uh, upload uh, other programs onto here. Um, there are some videos of people putting in some uh, disk clones. Uh, they, they pretend to be diskettes and uh, you can put in a, a thumb drive and, and be able to read off of a thumb drive. I, I kind of have a mixed feelings about that. I probably will do that, but I kind of have mixed feelings about it. I kind of like original machines. I mean, the little board that you put in to do the floppy disk emulation is more powerful than this entire machine. So it, it, it just doesn't quite feel right doing it that way. But in order to be able to get code in and out of the machine, I think uh, other things will be more interesting. Now, the um, interesting thing about the parallel, the uh, serial port is once I get directionality going back and forth, the machine as it ships out only does 300 baud and 1200 baud, which is going to be painfully slow. But in the instruction manual, they also, they, they actually tell you how to go to the motherboard, desolder a chip, and do some cuts and jumps and make it run at 9600. And that is in the user manual. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, so I think we will do that on this machine. I'll get it running at 9600, then uh, communication to it will not be too, uh, will not be too painful, but step at a time. <laughs>